morning, my brothers and sisters. Welcome to episode number 121 in the book of Genesis. Today is going to be a little bit of a crazy story. I'm going to talk about taking comfort in previous knuckleheads. So we're going to look back in history at a couple of knuckleheads and maybe take some comfort in it. This is the story where Jacob is deceived and he marries Leah and Rachel and he's deceived by his uh, uncle Laban. So what's in this for us? So what trial might the Lord be using for Jacob to mature him to an uh, to a man after God's own heart? That's David's line, but but maybe more patient, maybe one of more forgiveness, maybe more truth telling and dependence upon the Lord rather than himself. So just yesterday when we looked at uh, the previous chapter, Genesis chapter 28, we learned about vows, and those are directional, dedicated intent over a long time. And this is going to be that long time. So he made this vow that's financial and geographical, and he says, when I come back here, if, I, if I'm able to come back here, which he does 20 years later, uh, he gets this vow tested over time. So uh, listen to the story. It's Jacob married Leah and Rachel. So this is Genesis chapter 29. So when Jacob moved, when Jacob went on his journey, so he's gone a 500 mile, mile journey, he came to the land of the people of the east. <clears throat> that probably is code for they're not, not believers and moving away from the Lord. And as he looked, he saw a well in a field and behold, three flocks of sheep lying beside it. For out of that well, the flocks were watered. The stone on the well's mouth was large and when all the flocks were gathered there, the sheep, the shepherds, would roll the stone from the mouth of the well and water the sheep and put the stone back in its place over the mouth of the well. And Jacob says to them, My brothers, where do you come from? They said, We are from Haran. And he said, Do you know Laban, the son of Nahor? They said, We know him. He said to them, Is it well with him? They said, It is well. And see, Rachel, his daughter, is coming with the sheep. He said, Behold, it is still high day. It's not time for the livestock to be gathered together. Water the sheep and go pasture them. But they said, we cannot until all the flocks are gathered together and the stone is rolled from the mouth of the well. Then we will water the sheep. While he was still speaking to them, Rachel came with her father's sheep, for she was a shepherdess. And now, as soon as Jacob saw Rachel, the daughter of Laban, his mother's brother, and the sheep of Laban's, his mother's brother, Jacob came near and rolled the stone from the well's mouth and watered the flock of Laban, his mother's brother. So Jacob apparently is a very strong person. And we meet Rachel, who's this faithful working shepherdess. Verse 11, then Jacob kissed Rachel and wept aloud. And Jacob told Rachel that he was her father's kinsman and that he was Rebekah's son. And she ran and told her father. Now let me just pause here for just a second. So Jacob is 77 years old at the time uh, of this, and he's going to die at 147 years, so about halfway through his life. But he's been gone, or these people have been gone 500 miles away for 77 years, for Jacob's whole whole life. So uh, this was a, a, a big deal. As soon as Laban heard the news about Jacob, his sister's son, he ran to meet him and embraced him and kissed him and brought him uh, to his house. So Laban was alive when last the family visited. Last Thanksgiving was 77 years ago. So Jacob told Laban all these things, and Laban said to him, Surely you're my bone of my, you are my bone and my flesh. And he stayed with them a month. Then Laban said to Jacob, Because you are my kinsman, should you therefore serve me for nothing? Tell me, what shall your wages be? Now Laban had two daughters. The name of the older was Leah. The name of the younger was Rachel. Leah's eyes were weak, but Rachel was beautiful in form and appearance. Jacob loved Rachel, and he said, I will serve you seven years for your younger daughter, Rachel. And Laban said, It is better that I give her to you than I should give her to any other man. Stay with me. So Jacob served seven years for Rachel, and they seemed to him but a few days because, he, because of the love he had for her. Then Jacob said to Laban, Give me my wife, that I may go into her, for my time is completed. So Laban gathered together all the people of the place and made a feast. In the evening he took his daughter Leah and brought her to Jacob, and he went into her. 
So Laban gave his female servant Zilpah, she'll come into the story in a few days, to his daughter Leah to be her servant. And in the morning, behold, it was Leah. And Jacob said to Leah, what is this you have done to me? Did I not serve you, serve with you for Rachel? Why then have you deceived me? Laban said, it is not so done in our country to give our younger before the firstborn. Complete the week of this one and we will give you the other also in return for serving me another seven years. Jacob did so and completed her week, the week of the, of the wedding festival. Then Laban gave him his daughter, Rachel, to be his wife. Laban gave his female servant to Bilah and to his daughter, Rachel, to be her servant. So Jacob went into Rachel also, and he loved Rachel more than Leah and served Laban for another seven years. So here, Laban deceives, Laban deceives a relative. Laban, who was advertised as a safe place of refuge, turns out to be not a safe place. And he's involved with a family that play, plays favorites. He marries two wives, and worse, they're two wives that are sisters. So here's what we know. Jacob's heart is not the same when he is old as when he is young. So he does mature and he does grow, and perhaps this episode is a part of it. In other words, the Lord can use bad circumstance. That is, the Lord is sovereign on the earth despite the evil heart of man. Remember, when Noah got off the boat, the Lord leaned into him and reiterated the covenant with Noah. <laughs> Just And also by saying, oh, by the way, I know, I know that the heart of man is, is still evil. So st here, God is still here. He's watching. He's working. This family and these people are going to do lots wrong. Stay with me in the book of Genesis and hopefully for the rest of the Bible, who knows. And, and you might take comfort in the foibles and fail failures. Likely you can name a couple of failures of yourself and that those are ones that God can work through. So today, in conclusion, I am taking comfort in the previous knuckleheads that have happened. Laban and Jacob and, uh, and Rachel and Leah here in the story today. I'm taking comfort in the previous knuckleheads so that when we encounter current uh, knuckleheads in, in our world, we can take comfort that the Lord is still sovereign and the Lord is still working. So if you're a knucklehead, thanks for coming. Stay with me. Stay with God. He can work with you. Thanks for listening.